right. So hello, everyone. Welcome to this Yim class. How is the sound? Is okay? Can you hear me? Okay, perfect. Nice. Hi, welcome. <laughs> hello. So for the Yim class, we'll need, uh, as usual, our props, things like blocks, or if you have cushions around, or a bolster is also very, very nice to have. Today we'll do a full full body yin, and we start. We can start straight away, lying on the back, and you can bring the soles of the feet together. That feels nice for your hips. You can lift your hips to lie on the back and have your lower back in contact with the floor. And you can have your hands on your belly or alongside the body. And if this doesn't feel comfortable, you can extend your legs. What is important here is to focus on the breath. So we we'll start breathing into the belly, a deep abdominal breath. So breathing in through the nose, exhaling through the nose. And again, deep breathing through the nose all the way into your belly. And exhaling fully. And you can keep going at your own pace, following the, the rhythm of your breath, breathing in and out through the nose. and allowing for the body to soften with every inhalation and with every exhalation. We take this few moments to fully arrive on, on our space, on, on the mat, on the practice. And you can extend your legs one by one and extend the arms over your head, extending the whole body, stretching the whole body, breathing in through the nose and exhaling through the mouth. And one more time, deep breath in through the nose. Exhale through the mouth. And you can hug your knees to your chest and roll over to the side, any side. Taking a couple of moments there, lying on your side. And when you're ready, you can slowly find your way to a comfortable seat sitting comfortably and we open our practice together with one ohm. So we take a deep breath in through the nose. Slowly open the eyes and we start with our first yin pose. So yin is a, is a cold practice, so we don't do any warm up. We start straight away with the half butterfly. For that, we extend our red leg, right leg and we bend the left leg, bringing the left foot against the inner thigh of the extended leg, the right leg. We will fold over. It doesn't have to be over the leg, you can fold a bit towards the inside of the leg if it feels better. And you can have support here if you want to have a block to support the head or a bolster or more height, as much as you need to allow the body to soften. 
I will stay for a few minutes here, put the timer. And once you find a place where you feel something, you feel some stretch, but it's not too much and it's not too little, you can stay there, softening. So we practice the yin with the soft muscles. We really allow the body to soften, to surrender into the gravity. And it's the, the time and the gravity that will work for us to open up the body very gently with patience. And you can focus on your breath. Observing your breathing, the inhalation, the contact of the air with the nose. As it goes in and out. Really softening. With nothing to do and nowhere to go. And whenever your, your mind starts wandering around, just bring it back to the present moment by bringing it, by bringing the attention to your breathing or to the sensations in your body. And the body is always in the present moment. So as we focus on, on the body, on whatever is happening in the body, we come back. Maybe as the time goes by, maybe the body is inviting you to go a bit deeper. You can take on that invitation only if it feels right. If it doesn't, you can just stay where you are. There's no need to force or push or go into any specific pose. And we'll take our last full deep breath into the pose, breathing in through the nose. Exhaling fully through the mouth. And slowly coming out of the pose, very slowly. So in yin, it's important how we come in and how we come out of the poses. We come out very gently, there's no rush. So if you had a bolster or some support, you can put it to the side. And we're going to bring our extended leg. So in my case is the right leg, but maybe you did otherwise. So the extended leg, we're going to bring it over the bent leg to come into a shoelace pose if your knees are 
okay. You can check in with your knees. If there's any pain on your knees, you can extend your the leg that's underneath. So you can come into a variation. Checking with your knees, if they're both fine, we'll stay here. Check that both sit bones are on the floor. If one of them is in the air, you can use a cushion underneath so you have some support. You can either stay upright, if that's already enough, you can stay here. If you want more, you can fold forward for more intensity, releasing your head, your neck, and we'll stay for a few minutes. So finding the, the place that works for you. It doesn't have to be very intense, just the intensity that works for you today. Keep breathing, softening your Shoulders, see if there's any tension on the shoulders, on the jaw, on the neck. And soften. And keep breathing. It's a practice of, of patience, of acceptance, of surrendering and letting go. And those are the most difficult things to do in life. So yin is a, is a practice that we can use outside of the mat to all the things that we learn on the mat. In a yin practice, we can use outside. learning to, to sit with discomfort, just observing. And maybe, maybe finding the comfort in the discomfort. And we take our last deep breath in the pose, breathing in fully through the nose. And exhaling completely. And we'll slowly release, being very mindful of our knees. 
very gently. We release the pose, we extend both legs in front of us and we stay there for a moment for a rebound, noticing the immediate effects of the practice, noticing the sensations after coming out of two long holds. When you're ready, we go to the other side. So we start with the half butterfly with the left leg extended. If you did the, the right leg extended, now we keep the left leg extended and we bend the, the right leg. So remember which side you did before. And you can have also slightly your left leg slightly bent or have some support under the knee if you tend to have a knee pain. Keeping all the muscles relaxed, we allow the body to fold forward until it stops naturally. Here we can stay without props if you prefer, or you can use your props as needed, as high as you wish, as high as you need today. Supporting your head, your neck, and we'll stay for time. Really allowing for the body to soften, finding a way, a place where there is some sensation. But you know you can stay for time. It's not becoming unbearable. And it's always better to, to start with little sensation because it, they will increase the sensations over time as we spend minutes in a pose. The sensations will keep changing. Maybe they will increase. So better to, to start with less intensity and stay for longer. The benefits will be more and more intensity and stay for short. Soften the shoulders, the neck, the jaw, and the belly. And we keep breathing. As you keep breathing, you keep softening and keep releasing any unnecessary tension on the belly. Notice where your mind is going. Is it going to the past or the future? 
gently bring it back. Back to your breath. Back to your body. And we take our last deep breath in the pose, breathing in through the nose, exhaling through the mouth, and releasing. You can push the floor with your hands to slowly come out of the pose, moving very slowly. And you can put your props to the side. Taking a moment there, there is no rush. And whenever you're ready, you can come into the shoelace on the other side. So now we're going to bring the, the extended leg over the bent knee for the shoelace. On the other side, checking that your knees are happy if they are not you can extend the leg that's underneath and only keep the upper knee bent and you can have some support under the seat bones if one of the seat bones is in the air and you can stay upright or you can fold forward and we'll stay for a few minutes and notice if this side maybe feels different, maybe this side needs something different, maybe more support or less. You can always adjust every pose according to, to your body, according to each side, according to how you're feeling each day. See if there's any unnecessary holding on, any unnecessary tension on the face, on the belly, on the shoulders. Make the, the conscious decision to release any unnecessary tension. And keep breathing.
I'm going to take our last deep breath in the pose, breathing in through the nose. Exhaling through the mouth. And we slowly, very gently release the legs, being mindful of the knees. And we extend both legs in front of us, taking a moment to feel the, the rebound, the echo of the pose, we can make a little massage to our knees, massaging the kneecaps. And allowing for the body to integrate the long holds that we just did. And when you're ready, you can slowly come into our next pose. So if you are on a hard floor, you might want to have some blanket or some padding underneath your knees. We're coming into all fours for the puppy pose or the melting heart pose. So if you want to support your knees, you can bring a, a folded blanket underneath and from all fours, keeping the hips over the knees, we'll slide our hands forward to bring the forehead on the floor. Or if you wish, if that's okay for your neck, you can bring your chin on the floor. But for me, that would be too intense. So you decide, you can take how does it feel with your forehead? How does it feel with your chin? And you decide which one works best for you. And stay a couple of minutes, not too long. We are in a gentle back bend here. So bending, bringing the the heart to the floor, melting our heart towards the floor, like an offering to the earth. Keep a full, deep breath. And we'll take our last deep breath in the pose, breathing in through the nose, exhaling through the mouth. To release, we'll just slide forward to lie on the belly. So we come to, to lie on the belly, bringing one hand on top of the other, making a pillow and bringing the forehead on top of the hands and resting there for a moment. Allowing for the, the body to feel the echo of the pose.
And when you're ready, we can slowly come into a sphinx. So we bend the arms, we come on the forearms. You decide how much height you want by bringing the elbows closer to the body. You'll have more height. If the elbows are more far away from the body, there will be less height, less intensity. So you can check with your lower back. You can have your legs wide apart or a bit more closer together. You can support your forehead with a block or have your hands under the chin. Once we find the place where we feel at ease, we just stay there for time. In this very therapeutic pose for the lower back. Very gently squeezing the the lower back, we strengthen the tissues, the connective tissues. And for the last minute, you can decide if you want to stay where you are, you can stay there. If you feel like there's space for a bit more intensity, you can extend your arms, but only if that feels okay for your lower back. So there's no need to, to do it if it's hurting. You always have full freedom to choose what works best for your body today. No one pose is better than the other. Just breathe. Taking our last inhalation in the pose, breathing in and exhaling. Just slowly release, bringing again one hand on top of the other, making a pillow and bringing the forehead on top of the hands. And you can gently move your hips side to side, just rest. Breathing into your belly, massaging your lower back with your breath by breathing deeply into the belly. And we bring the left elbow towards the left knee in the, the gecko pose, looking over to the left. So left elbow goes towards the left knee. We look to the left and we rest in the gecko pose for a few moments.
we release and we go to the other side so bending the right elbow and the right knee and bringing the right elbow towards the right knee looking over to the right Extending the leg, coming back to the center, and we'll slowly push into all fours, moving gently, finding our way into all fours, and to a couple of cat cow movement, very gentle, if that feels right for your spine, moving with the breath and vertebra. By vertebra rounding, inhaling to arch, and exhaling to round. Again, inhaling to arch, and exhaling to round. And releasing back to the center and coming to sit, Japanese style. And from here, we'll come into the malasana, the squatting pose. And we can come into malasana either from, from the floor. For some people, it's easy. For other people, it's not easy to come from the floor. So we can come to standing and come from the standing pose. So see what works for you. If there's pain on the knees, if the knees are not comfortable here, we can use a block or a stack of books to sit. So we have less pressure on the knees. If the, the heels are high up in the air, we can roll the blanket to support our heels. We'll stay for a couple of minutes here, allowing for the hips to soften down, breathing. It's very, very healing pose for many, many things. It really helps for lower back pain. It's a very grounding pose. You can bring your attention to your feet. And see how, how is the connection of your feet with the floor, with the earth. Last deep breath in and exhaling and to release we'll come into a forward fold so straight away extending our legs and you can keep them slightly bent coming into a ragdoll you can have your knees slightly bent you can have 
the hands on the floor or on top of bolster or holding opposite elbows. Releasing the neck, the head. We won't stay too long and if it feels very tiring, you can use a wall behind you to lean on the wall. And we keep breathing. There's at any point some discomfort or dizziness. Please come down and sit. And keep breathing and softening. And we take our last inhalation in the pose, breathing in fully, exhaling. And we slowly bend the knees through Malasana. We come to sit on the floor, extending the legs in front of us and taking a moment there to allow for the body to integrate the postures, breathing. If there's any dizziness, we just keep breathing calmly through the nose. When you're ready, you can open your eyes and we come into our next pose, the caterpillar. So a forward fold, you can have your legs together or slightly apart, you can have them slightly bent. If you have, you know, you have hyperextension on, on your knees, you can support your knees with something underneath. You can use a big bolster or blocks to support you, we just allow the body to fold forward over the legs until it stops naturally, using as much height as needed. If you like to use props, maybe you, you prefer without a prop. If you wish to have a bit more intensity, a bit more stretch behind the neck, on the back of the neck, and you can bring your chin towards your chest. Notice how that feels. We'll stay for a few minutes, fully relaxing into this pose. It's like a like a blanket, soft blanket for the nervous system. Allowing us to come inwards even more so, folding into ourselves, looking inside.
and keep breathing. Here it's it's fine. It's okay to keep your spine rounded because it's a passive forward fold. We are not pressing or pushing into it. Just letting the gravity and the time open up our body gentleness. We take our last full inhalation in the pose, breathing in and exhaling. You can push the floor with your hands to slowly roll out of the pose. No rush, moving in your own time at your own pace. If you had any props, you can put them to the side. Staying there for a few moments, allowing the body to integrate and observe the immediate effects of the pose and calming down our nervous system. And when you're ready, in your own time, you can come to lie on your back. And you can bend the knees and hug the knees to your chest. You can roll side to side. Releasing the lower back after the forward fold. And coming to a happy baby. You can hold the feet, or you can hold the ankles, or behind the knees. Or you can find a, a variation, bringing the soles of the feet together with the, the stirrup. Either variation that works for you, 
Just stay there for a few moments. If you are in, in the happy baby, you can roll side to side, massage your lower back. And you can release your feet and come back to the center, bringing the knees back to the center, hugging the knees to your chest. As we prepare for a twist, so we open the arms to the sides and we'll shift the hips slightly to the left, and we bring both knees over to the right. You can have the knees on the floor or on top of a cushion or a block. And you can have your right hand on top of the knees. And you can open your left arm to the side. You can look up or look to your left side, releasing your left shoulder Breathing and releasing your lower back. Inhaling, you can slowly come back to the center, bringing both knees back to the center, and then shifting the hips slightly to the right, and then both knees over to the left. Either resting the knees on the floor or on a cushion or a block. You can have your left hand on top of your knees, opening your right arm to the right, you can look up or look over to the right. Soften the right shoulder down, keep breathing. As we inhale, we come back to the center, bringing both knees back to the center. You can bring the feet on the floor and slide your feet to extend the legs and find your last pose, the Shavasana. If there's any adjustments you need to do on the body, please do them anything you need to feel fully relaxed and comfortable if you want to have a bolster under your knees or something on top of the eyes cushion under your head make yourself fully fully comfortable on your mat Lying on your back, 
with your legs slightly apart, your palms facing up. Relax your feet. Relax your legs. Relax your hips and your lower back. Relax the belly, the chest, and your heart, and your chest. Soften the arms, the shoulders, and the neck. And release all the facial muscles, the jaw, the tongue in your mouth, the space between the eyebrows and the forehead. And allow your body to rest on the floor, fully supported by the earth with nothing to do and nowhere to go. Just relax and absorb all the benefits of this practice. Slowly, slowly you can bring your awareness back into your body, moving your feet, wiggling your fingers, moving your neck from side to side, extending the arms over your head and stretching the whole body. Taking a deep breath in through the nose, exhaling through the mouth, bending the knees and rolling over to the side, any side. and taking your time at your own pace whenever you feel ready you can slowly find your way to a seat sit comfortably and we finish our practice together by chanting one om 
We inhale through the nose. Oh. We bring the palms together, we rub them. And we bring the palms on top of the eyes. You can bring your hands wherever you feel you need them most. If there's a place in your body that needs that warmth, you can bring your hands there for a moment. Taking in that energy. And thank you. Thank you so much, everyone, for your practice, for coming to this class. Thank you if you're watching this recording. I will see